Hello and welcome to this presentation on biofuels. Our goal here today is to be able to connect what we've been learning with cellular respiration and apply that to the fuels that we're placing in our car. Now, most of the fuel is still 90% gasoline, but 10% of that fuel is coming from ethanol. And ethanol uh, is not being produced chemically, it's being produced in a biochemical sort of way. So I'll show you how living things are being involved in this process uh, and explain again how it's linked back to cellular respiration. What we've said so far about cellular respiration uh, would be, of course, that sugar used as a starting material. Lots of energy in sugar, but that living things can convert that to some amount of ATP as well as some waste products. Depends on what type of anaerobic or whether it's aerobic cellular respiration as to what sugars or uh, uh, amounts of ATP and what the waste products are, but that's the general overview. For yeast, we said that sugar uh, can be broken down by that yeast and converted to, it should say, two ATP, as well as carbon dioxide and ethanol. And it's the ethanol to be used as an energy source to power engines. So we need to make note of that ethanol as being a biofuel. There it is. And the idea with biofuel is that this is fuel being produced by living organisms. And so the yeast doing its cellular respiration in the process making a, this ethanol, we would have to distill it away. So ethanol and water boil at different temperatures and we can purify the ethanol away by distilling it. But in the end, the yeast are going to be making the ethanol for us. There are some things we have to have available. A source of simple sugars, for example, would be helpful. One example of a simple sugar would be glucose. Uh, I'm drawing this as a hexagon because back in biology two, we learned about uh, sugar molecules having their carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens form a ring shape like this hexagon here. Glucose, we said, was a simple sugar. We also refer to it as a monosaccharide because there's one sugar there. Or we can use simple sugars such as sucrose. Sucrose is table sugar, and it's still simple even though it's two sugars linked together, and we learned about that being a disaccharide. Monosaccharides, disaccharides, both examples of simple sugars that we can feed to yeast. And in the process, the yeast make the ethanol. Now in Brazil, uh, this is exactly the way that they make their biofuel. Um, they also pump their cars with gasoline and a mixture of gasoline and ethanol. Um, but their ethanol is produced because they take the sugar from sugar cane, it's a simple sugar, feed that to yeast and let the yeast go ahead and make the ethanol that they need. Now in Brazil, that's great, except here in the U.S. we don't really have access to sugar cane. We can import it, but that's just going to add money to it. And we have access to other sugars that uh, Brazil typically doesn't. So what do we do here in the U.S.? Well, here in the U.S., we use a more complex sugar like starch. We have access to lots of starch, like in corn, for example. More on that in a moment. What I'm having you draw out here is an example of what starch looks like. Starch is a polysaccharide, so we're linking together a whole bunch of sugars. The um, difference, though, is that I'm saving you a ton of time because most starches are hundreds of these sugar molecules linked together. We're only drawing six just to save some time. We can't, however, feed starch to yeast. I mean, we can try, but the enzymes that yeast have to break down sugars don't work on starch. It is a different shape than the simple sugars like glucose and sucrose. So instead, if we're going to take starch and hope that yeast can convert it to ethanol for us, what we have to do is we have to digest that polysaccharide into simple sugars by using an enzyme such as amylase. In the picture, the amylase is chopping away the bonds that hold the sugars together, making this a starch up here. But if we remove those bonds, then what we're left over with are these simple sugars. And if we get the starch to the simple sugar stage, 
Then we can feed it to yeast to produce the ATP that they need and the carbon dioxide that in this case we don't care about and the ethanol that uh, we can use to power our cars. In the US, we have access to lots of corn and lots of corn starch as a result. And so this is the way most of our biofuel is produced. Again, yeast don't have the right shaped enzymes to digest on starch. And so we would have to use amylase. We have access to lots of amylase. Your salivary glands produce amylase. Your pancreas produces amylase. Many other living things out there make amylase. So we have access to plenty of this enzyme. And again, most of the biofuels that are going into your car are being produced through this exact process. Now there are some problems with this that we've run into, one of which is that um, by using more and more corn for ethanol production, that the price of corn is also starting to go up. And if that's the case, then we don't want to be driving up the price of corn for food when we're using more and more of it for fuel. And so scientists have started to wonder, are there other parts of the corn plant, or any plant for that matter, that we could be using as an energy source that might also contain sugar. And so in the picture here, we're seeing the results of the harvester coming by. We have the stalks of corn with the uh, kernels or the cobs still on there. But when the harvester comes by and collects all the kernels of corn, there's still leftover stalks and leaves. We refer to all of that stuff as stover. Um, and scientists are wondering, is there something that we could use in there? to uh, feed to yeast? And the answer is yes, because there is another complex sugar in plant cell walls called cellulose. Now cellulose is a complex sugar. It's a polysaccharide. It is much longer than the diagram that you're making. Uh, hundreds of sugar molecules linked together like starch. The one thing I'll say though is I, I'm not showing you the exact details cellulose and starch are not the same. I know you're drawing them to be the same, but they're not chemically the same. They're not chemically the same shape, but for the way we're drawing it, this works just fine. For plants, cellulose gives cell walls their strength. Remember, plants don't have a skeleton, so they need to be able to get some strong support somewhere, and that's gonna come from their cell walls, in particular, from the cellulose that's there. Now it's only used for strength. Plants don't start to break down this cellulose for energy. That's uh, something they wouldn't do. Uh, only used for strength in plants. In order for us to feed this to yeast, however, again, yeast don't have the enzymes to feed on cellulose either, a, a polysaccharide. And so what has to happen first is we have to digest that cellulose into simple sugars using an enzyme called cellulase. So here we have this diagram that's using a different enzyme to snip apart the bonds, separating this polysaccharide cellulose into simple sugars like glucose. Once we do that process, then we can feed the simple sugars to the yeast to have them make the ATP that they want and in the end the ethanol that we would like to put into our cars. With cellulose, however, while there's lots of cellulose out there, there's not many sources of cellulase. And we're gonna come back to this later on when we take a look at the reading that you did about ants and fungus and biofuels. So more on cellulase in a bit. Now, there's one other little limitation here. Not only are there very few sources of cellulase, but when it comes to plants, they don't just have cellulose to provide them with strength. Instead, they also have this purple material here in the diagram that is called lignin. Now, these yellow bars, those are rods of cellulose. But to provide extra strength, the uh, cellulose is surrounded by these uh, molecules called lignin. And if we're going to add enzymes like cellulase, to the cellulose, the lignin has to be removed. The enzymes don't work around the lignin, instead they work on the cellulose. So the lignin has to be taken out of the way. 
And scientists are kind of struggling with this. Uh, there are not a lot of great ways to do this. Some of the ways that scientists are working to get this to happen is to use high heat and to use ammonia. Ammonia is a very toxic or caustic chemical. Um, and so they're trying to figure out ways to do this. This is posing to be difficult, but they'll, uh, they've got some ideas. And I'll show you some of those ideas in a moment. So this becomes a complicated process. You might not be able to see it behind the, uh, the image there down at the bottom, but I'll let this disappear there. It should say cellulose plus lignin, like we have in the image up here, would have to be pre-treated with heat, ammonia, or whatever else to get rid of the lignin and be left with just cellulose. Then we have to add cellulase to digest the cellulose into simple sugars. Then we can finally feed it to yeast to produce the ATP, and better yet, the ethanol that we want to power our cars. This is a long, complicated process. So, if harvesting complex sugars from this leftover corn material, this stover, is such a pain, why bother? And why not just stick with using starch? Well, the answer has to do with two things. One, starch from corn is used as a food source too, and so we just talked about the price issue. But the other thing to consider is that cellulose is the most abundant biomolecule on the planet. Now you may not have encountered that word biomolecule before. This is what this means. If we were to take a look at you and the biomolecules that make you up, if we made a list of all the different proteins, fats, and carbohydrates that make you up, and then weighed every single last one of those. For example, you are made of in part of hemo by hemoglobin, right? This protein in red blood cells to carry oxygen, it, that's going to be on the list. And if we were to weigh the amount of hemoglobin in you, we would know the mass of hemoglobin that makes up a human. If we did this with every living thing out there, not just humans, but every living thing out there, our list of biomolecules would be really, 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 really long. I mean, do plants have hemoglobin, right? No, they don't. So there's lots of different biomolecules, lots of different carbohydrates, fats, and proteins that would be on this list. And if we weighed every single last one of them, this list that would be thousands of biomolecules long, you would be surprised if any one of those was 5%, of the overall weight of the biomass of the world. And yet, when it comes to cellulose, scientists estimate that over 50% of the Earth's biomass is this one sugar that comes from plants. And that's because every single plant out there has cell walls in that are made of this particular sugar. And remember, this sugar is a polysaccharide. And so there's lots of little sugars there that potentially we could feed to yeast if we can just get access to the cellulose and digest it. And because cellulose doesn't just come from corn plants, this makes the production of ethanol from cellulose very sustainable. We could take branches from trees. We could take grasses such as switchgrass that is being shown here or prairie plants that grow back every year or the clippings from your lawn or we could take the leaves that fall to the forest floor in the fall or we could take even plant matter that's been processed to some extent like paper right paper is made out of cellulose or uh, perhaps even newsprint or cardboard you name it if it's been made out of plants or made from plants then there's cellulose in there somewhere and it's possible that we might be able to use that to have yeast turn that into ethanol for us which might be a heck of a lot more sustainable than waiting for some dinosaurs to die and decompose for a million years one of the areas of research that's taking place at uw madison and i know you don't have this in your notes but it's just interesting to me is that, uh, and this is being done by a researcher, his name is Sean Kepler, uh, he's an Oregon resident. Um, what they're doing is they're taking a look at the genetics of a whole bunch of plants 
And what they found is that there's some plants that have the genetics to produce a easily digestible form of lignin called zip lignin. With a name like zip lignin, it's almost like it sounds like zipper, right? That we have two sides to the lignin molecule that easily detach from each other. This is an easily digestible form of lignin, which should make being able to get access to the cellulose even easier. Well, not all plants have this digestible form. Corn doesn't, for example. So is it possible that we could genetically modify plants to produce the zip lignin instead? And if we can, then what we'd be able to do is to grow those plants and get access to the cellulose that they have. In fact, Sean Kepler has done exactly that. These corn plants with zip lignin grow really tall and they also flop over at the slightest breeze. But the idea is to be able to have better access to cellulose. So they're working on it. What I would like you to watch, though, is one of these videos. In particular, it's in the lower left-hand corner here. So you're going to have to go back to the slides on the biotech calendar there. Open up the slide presentation, actually present it to yourself. Select this particular video in the lower left. Uh, it's from the Great Lakes Bioenergy Research Center, which is uh, in part based at UW-Madison, doing research to learn how we would be able to produce biofuels. Uh, while the other videos are good, and I would recommend watching those if you're not so sure about some of this information that I'm presenting, uh, that'd be great. But I, again, the one in the lower left-hand corner does a great two to three minute job of summarizing the concepts and gives you some strong images in there too. Outside of that, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, and thank you for watching this video.